Theresa May has used a landmark speak on, speech on Brexit to hit back at the EU's refusal to offer Britain a bespoke deal after it leaves the bloc. She stood firm in calling for a new type of relationship with the EU, saying if this is cherry-picking, then every trade agreement is cherry-picking. Hugh Bennett is the Deputy Editor of Brexit Central and he joins me from our Westminster studio. Good afternoon to you, Hugh Bennett. So the Prime Minister says this isn't cherry-picking, every uh, free trade agreement is cherry-picking, and yet we've got Giva Hofstadt saying that actually she's adding a few more cherries onto the Brexit cake. What is it? Well, you know, I think there are some people like Giva Hofstadt on the EU side that are always going to say that no deal is ever good enough. You know, that's a negotiation. This is to be expected. You know, the truth of the matter is the EU has a huge range of different agreements with different countries. You look at its trade deals with Japan, with South Korea. Um, uh, with Canada. You know, there, there's different sectors involved in all of them, as May pointed out. There's different legal relationships, different levels of integration with the single market, with all of the EU's near neighbours, countries like Switzerland, Ukraine and Norway. So I think you know, it's all very well for the EU to say this, and you know, I think this is all part of their negotiating position, but I think May is absolutely right. You know, the reality of a trade deal is that you have some areas where you say, Yes, we want to prioritise access here. We're going to align our rules quite closely. Other areas, we're not so interested in close access. We won't align so closely. That, that's how every single trade deal in the world works. And I think for the EU to, to be saying that that's somehow cherry-picking, you know, I think it's a negotiating position, but it's not the reality. But did we get the detail and the clarity on that that we have been lacking so far? Well, I think we, we did to a large extent. You know, so far, a lot of people have been saying you know, there isn't enough detail in May's vision. There's a lot of platitudes. You know, and frankly, there are some people out there that aren't going to be happy with anything May says unless it's a, a surprise announcement that she's cancelling Brexit. But I think what we actually did get in today's speech is a lot more clarity. You know, she spelled out a lot of the sectors where she thinks it's important that we, that we align, where a deal is important, pointing at areas where the EU doesn't, doesn't have a precedent for deals before, like financial services, but has actually tried to negotiate in the past, as it did in the TTIP deal with America, which didn't ultimately come to fruition. Um, but I think, you know, most importantly, she's touched on you know, the, way that, uh, the way that the UK's laws will align with the EU's after Brexit. She's made clear that this isn't going to be harmonisation, single market style alignment, where the UK is bound by EU law. It's going to be a relationship built on mutual recognition, which means that you know, the UK can stay, stay aligned for the most part, but accepts that you, know, we, you can achieve the same regulatory outcomes with different, different precise wordings of regulations. You don't need to have everything word for word to actually get the same regulatory outcomes. But we didn't get detail on that fundamental question about the Irish border, did we? Well, I think May did actually... Um, did actually provide some detail uh, there when she, she, spoke, she spoke about two proposals. There's the, the customs proposal, which is a sort of a blue sky proposal for a double custom system. That's, that's certainly not my preference. Uh, but she did actually reference a technological solution. Um, well, I think if anything, she but it wasn't detail, was it, Hugh Bennett? No, and I think that's, if anything, she... that, that's why Michel Barnier put forward his draft uh, legal text this week, saying, well, we haven't got anything uh, from the UK. We need the detail. We need those technological solutions, if that's what you want. Well, I think what the EU put forward this week is, you know, they are well aware that what they've put forward is not a workable proposal in any sense. You know, I think throughout this process, they've talked up the importance of protecting the Good Friday Agreement, you know, respecting the constitutional status of Northern Ireland. The offer they put on the table on Wednesday does precisely the opposite. I think it really shows that they've been playing a very cynical game with the Irish border by putting such a, you know, such a, such a provocative proposal down on the table that they know the UK could never accept. It's clear that they've just been using this as to try and get leverage to force the UK into a more general customs union type proposal. And I think, you know, I think they are right that the UK needs to do more to spell out a technological solution, but there's plenty of work that has actually been done on this. You, you, you can actually find a report that was commissioned by the European Parliament, published by the European Parliament last year, which looked at a number of solutions similar to the ones that Theresa May touched on her speech today, but actually going a bit further, to say, you know, the, these are unprecedented um, in some cases, but a lot of them build upon existing technology, and we can actually use them. Uh, with, you know, with, with the right level of goodwill and concentration from both sides, we can okay. use them to actually get a solution in place that works. Okay. Hugh Bennett, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this afternoon.